What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two co-hosts and two best friends, Mike LaPlante, Mike Bonnie. What's going on, my dudes? What up? Howdy. You guys ready to talk some football or what? You betcha. I'm always down for some football. Um, but first, guys, before we get started, please remember to subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel and to the podcast, please, and wherever you listen to us. Uh, first, let's jump into the teams that buy this week. Chiefs are on a buy, Cowboys on a buy, Falcons on a buy, and the Jets, guys. So uh, sorry, but you can't fire up all the all your Jets players in your lineups this weekend. Damn. Man, I was really hoping I'm even playing, you know, no Michael P. Ryan, you know? I've been That's itching to play Chris about. Herndon, man. Anybody want to play Frank Gore, or is that just me? <laughs> no, that's just Adam Gates. <laughs> Touche. <Yeah. laughs> uh, jumping into the Thursday night recap, though, boys. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts beat the Tennessee Titans 34-17. Phillip Rivers had a good night in uh, efficient 90s, 29-39. 39 308 yards and one touchdown, scoring 18 fantasy points. That was a good part of the Colts' offense for fantasy-wise. The bad part was uh, Jonathan Taylor. Seven carries for 12 yards, guys, and only playing a 24% of the snaps. What the fuck do we do with Jonathan Taylor the rest of the season? Cry? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think he'll figure it out. They're obviously still going to give him the ball. Just going to take him some time to get some used to it. They're obviously faster in the NFL. Yeah. It seems like, to me, that Frank Reich is just rolling with who's ever hot during that game. Like, it, each running back would get some carries at the beginning of the game. And, like, t- obviously Taylor didn't See, do anything with his. Base- and then Di- Naheem Hines just blows up 12 carries, 70 yards, and a touchdown. And a receiving touchdown, 115 total yards. Shout out Based to on, I mean, like, Jonathan Taylor's college, though, he needs 20 to 25 carries so he can get into a rhythm and actually break down the defense because he's a bigger guy. If, he's, if they're going to keep giving him 7 to 12 carries, they're going to keep getting – 40, 50 yard outputs because he's just not going to be able to get into the rhythm. Some running backs the, why, need it. Why, why don't they? Why don't the Colts know that? I don't know. They're that's why. I, that's why I'm wondering. Like, how did I just figure that out? But they can't. What do you think, Laplan? Is he just just smoked for this season? He ain't smoked because Frank Reich. We've seen this before in Philadelphia. He's got a running back by committee offense, and like I said, he. Uh, Terrible for Jonathan either, Taylor. Either that was you, Dylan. They, whoever go, has the hot hand has the ball in this offense. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, Hines played 56% of the snaps. Like I said, Taylor played 24, and Jordan Wilkins played 20. If you re- Wilkins, had, Wilkins had one more carry than Jonathan Taylor. It's like, if you really expect your star on? running back to be able to do that mu- to do a lot with those main carries, you're expecting way too much. I'm honestly leaning towards the side that he's just not good. I might get fl- I might catch a lot of shit for. Saying I think that. he's still good. I like I said. I think that he needs. He's a running back that needs to get into a rhythm. And Laplante, like we were talking about it earlier, he had a fumbling problem in college, and it doesn't look like that's went away. So that might weigh into the fact on why Frank Reich does not. Yeah, he's him. pretty he's, sure he's only had one fumble though, right? This year, probably lost, but he's he's put the ball on the ground a couple of times so far. You'd have to look that up. That thought I saw yeah, was only I one. I, got I just know a lot of people are frustrated with it. Well, yeah, because they I'm drafted him way too early. Because, yeah. I'm not frustrated with him because I don't own him anyway. And I wouldn't have drafted him that early. If you would have got him later, he's doing just fine. He's a running back, like, what, 22 or something like that? Yeah. Not good for where you draft him, but if you... He's a second-round draft. Yeah, unfortunately. Fantasy-wise, it's crazy. Never should have taken that, huh? As much as you guys want to talk about that, we should probably talk about the wide receivers in this uh, offense. Yeah, and this was the bright side of things. Uh, rookie Michael Pittman back at healthy, seven of eight. He caught seven of eight targets, guys, for 101 yards, 19 fantasy points. That's great to see. It pro- he's probably someone that needs to be picked up in most leagues, correct? 
Mm. It'd be a risky flex option just because Philip Rivers, he just, he's never really thrown to the wide receiver in his offenses. And they gave him a little, their couple gadget plays. T.Y. Hill in his back, too. I mean, he didn't do much, but still. Yeah, he's dog <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take away some from Pittman, though. Yeah, and then the other receiver worth talking about is Zach Pascal. Four or five caught four or five targets for thirty three yards. Didn't really not a whole lot. And then the tight ends, they didn't even really do a whole lot. Trey Burton three receptions on three targets, twenty four yards. And then Mo Ali Cox four targets, three receptions, nineteen yards. Mo Ali Cox actually played. Um, 66% of the snaps and Burton 53%, which is uh, kind of surprising to me, at, especially after seeing how much they were using Trey Burton previous weeks. Yeah, I think the injury to Jack Doyle had a factor in having Mo Ali Cox out on the field more. I think they're, they I mean, they used them to block. I mean, the guy's an animal. Yeah. <laughs> He's huge, man. He's like 6'7", 270 hey. pounds. The guy's there was a play in that game. Uh, he threw – Philip Rivers threw it to him in the end zone. And Philip Rivers overthrew the hell out of him. But in the process, uh, Miley Cox turned around and the defender ran into him and he just kind of pushed him off like it was nothing. I was like, wow, <laughs> this guy's huge. <laughs> All right, jumping over to the Titans side, guys. It was a rough game for their offense. Uh, Ryan Tannehill looked like he took a beating last night. Uh, he got popped one time and was real slow to get, real slow to get up late in the fourth quarter. But he was fifteen to twenty seven for one forty seven in a touchdown, guys. Only twelve fantasy points. You guys worried about Tannehill moving forward? A little bit. Or these the, next few games are gonna be rough for him. Is good because he plays some good defenses. But after he gets past like in the next two or three weeks, he should be back to his normal self. I think. I, I'd be a little worried until this offensive line shows a little bit more continuity. Since Taylor Lewan went down and the loss of Jack Coglin in the free agency, I mean, they're hurting, at least passing-wise. Yeah. If you guys are Tannehill owners, um, he plays Baltimore next week. Not mm-hmm. good. And then he plays Indianapolis yep. again, and you just saw what he did. That's not good. Then it gets a little – it. well, it gets easier after that. The next three are uh, – Week 13 against the Browns. Week 14, Jacksonville. Playoffs. Week 15, the Lions. Perfect time to get Tannehill, yep. actually, right now. Super by low. Yep. Might even be able to find him on the waiver wire yep. if you're lucky. Uh, Derek Henry had a pretty good night. He didn't find the end zone, but he had uh, 19 carries for 103 yards. Only saw two targets in the passing game. That's no surprise <laughs> to anyone for almost 12 fantasy points. The one surprise, guys... But it was real weird was A.J. Brown only getting targeted four times and catching one of them for 21 yards. Are you guys panicking mm-hmm. about no. A.J. Brown? Or is, yeah. oh, this is just a... Uh... He's, he's one of those receivers that will have a bad week every now and then. Yeah, it was bound to happen. He had five straight weeks with a yeah. touchdown. I mean, it's, yeah. you just can't keep up that production. And I think, didn't he drop a touchdown in this game, actually? He dro- I seen him drop a couple passes, man. He did not have a good day. And then the one time in the late in the fourth, you could tell he was frustrated from his rough yeah. night. He was get he was getting touched a little bit on like a curl route, and he it hit him right in the hands and he mm-hmm. dropped it. And then he looks instantly at the referee, just bitching and complaining. Like, yeah, you could tell that he was frustrated in his own head last night. Uh, but Corey Davis, after the goose egg he posted against the Bears, he had a good night. Five. Uh, Caught five and six balls for 67 yards and uh, 11 fantasy points. I mean, that's pretty decent. The, um, and then John A. Smith, six targets, only two receptions for 14 yards. He did find <laughs> the end zone on a rushing touchdown. No, why not? But the scary thing, guys, is that he has no more than two catches in the last five games. Is he? He's no longer nope. a every week starter nah. in the tight end position. And that's saying something because the tight end position. I know, shit. it's weird. Especially with Austin Hooper and guys like that coming back. It, yeah. You know, I mean, you, you know. might have to play him with the tight ends being so shit. Yeah, but you're not happy about it. Like, he was uh, for sure putting your lineup and relax about it at mm-hmm. the beginning of the year, and it's definitely not that anymore. But uh, let's jump into some game previews. First game here we got 
the two and six Houston Texans versus the five and three Cleveland Browns. Deshaun Watson, guys, four straight games of over twenty five fantasy points. Last week against the bad Jacksonville defense, nineteen to thirty two for two eighty one, two touchdowns. Browns passing defense is just as bad, so I expect them to do just as good. We'll plan anything. Uh, keep an uh, eye on the weather because I heard this might have a lot of uh, wins being in Cleveland, just like the last uh, game with the Raiders they had. Yeah, I didn't check any of the weather so far. I'm going to have to do that. I didn't, I didn't either. That's All right, Mike, you're playing. You're the weatherman. Uh, I'm really not. <laughs> weatherman the plan. Jumping over to the running backs for the Texans, David Johnson did not practice all week, and he has been ruled out. So it's going to be the Duke Johnson show. You guys trust him to be the RB two uh, to be a RB two yeah. this week? A low RB two. He's got major PPR value. I'll give him that. But oh yeah, I think he'll get you what he's projected around thirteen, fifteen points. He won't bust out anything crazy though. I agree with that. Um, then the pass catchers in this offense: Will Fuller, Randall Cobb, Brandon Cooks. Will Fuller. He's keeping that touchdown yes, streak sir. alive, guys. He is a must start. I think it's like it's, it's six or seven weeks in a row, six. right? That he scored a touchdown. That's so crazy. It's so crazy. Seven out of eight games with double digit fantasy points. The one game he struggled in, I think he had a zero, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Kind of a, on a not, that was just kind of an anomaly. But yeah, he's an every week uh, wide receiver, too, I'd say. <sighs> And then Brandon Cooks in this offense, guys, he's on fire as well. Is he uh, plugging yep. your lineup? And yes, sir. Forget it. He's target beast right now, man. He had a slow start to the year. I mean. He had to get used to Deshaun Watson. They had to get used to each other. Honestly. They're ever, working. Ever since they fired Bill O'Brien, he's been just lighting it up. True. Yeah, the whole offense. I was wrong last better. week, but I still like Randall Cobb a little bit. He can be a risky flex for you guys. Yeah, eh. only five points last week, but prior to that, he had three straight games of ten plus fantasy points. So it know. is risky. The only like it's somewhat four, consistent. The only four sure options in this offense though are Will Fuller and Cooks. I mean, you you seen Will Fuller with his mm-hmm. uh, touchdown streak, and then Brandon Cooks has had four straight games of at least nine targets and sixty yards. Uh, he's got three touchdowns in those four games. Like they're both lighting it up right now. Yep. And then it's kind of a shit show for the tight ends now, guys, since Jordan Akins is uh, back from injury, so you can't really start either of them. I don't Mm -hmm. want to. Jumping over the Browns, though, guys, Baker Mayfield. The Texas defense is bad. Tenth most most points allowed to quarterbacks at uh, 24 and a half in Jake Lutton just torched them. Yeah, you guys should be starting them for sure. Yeah, as long yeah. as the weather pans out, I'd be yeah, confident. Yeah, again. <laughs> yeah, touche. That's the only thing that's going to really be hampering these offenses. Otherwise, Except it's- for running. Except for the running game, maybe. Yeah, uh, speaking of that running game, Nick Chubb, uh, it's looking like he's going to be returning this he's week. He's back. Mike, I know you're the Kareem Hunt owner here. Panic me during Kareem Hunt with Chubb. Zero. Back. He was better with he Nick did- Chubb there, actually. Z running back running two, back two. Flex, what are you thinking? High end, I'd feel like. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, he, he yeah. went he went through a rough stretch of matchups. Uh, for some for some reason he just without Chubb, he just couldn't do as much. It was very weird. He had a really good matchup against the Raiders, apparently, but he busted. That was a yeah, that was an odd phenomenon game. I, he just thrives better in this second running back role it seems like he's yeah efficient. it's interesting because chubb just w- wears people down because he's so big and strong and then kareem hunt comes in it's like yeah he could do whatever he wants yeah one's one's really shifty and one's just you know pounds you into the ground you comfortable starting yeah Nick chubb both. Week with uh, both him being both you're starting yeah okay he's a running back one and two of the and three the games pe- he's played when healthy he's a beast Offensive line help. Uh, the pass catchers in this offense, guys, Jarvis Langer, Rashard Higgins, and then Austin Hooper's back. So uh, Harrison Bryant goes back to being fantasy useless. Pretty much. I, I like the matchup for Hooper this week, and I definitely like the matchup with Jarvis Landry. He made the start sit column. 
for the website this week. And uh, obviously Jarvis Landry lines up mostly in the slot. And I read that they are ha- uh, the Texans are having one of their safeties. I can't think of his name off the top of my Just head. Justin Reed, maybe? He's covering the slot right now. Uh, I don't think so, actually. I think it's someone else. I should know <laughs> that, but yeah. But uh, I feel like Jarvis Landry should eat this week. You guys agree? He saw 11 targets last week. Had a touchdown in his hands, and it was ruled the touchdown on the field. Just I, got overturned. What I think, uh, again, if the weather is shit, I think this is going to be the one guy that's actually going to benefit just because he's he's the slot guy. He runs all the short routes. Well, what about Hooper? Yeah. What what route do you think he's running? Hey, he ain't running anything deep. As long as he's, you know, 100% healthy. Yeah, I mean. I think good. Landry and Hooper are going to do really good this week. They'll be just fine. I just don't think they're going to. If the weather is bad, I just don't think they're going to. Yeah, get, yeah true. Much. That's all. Like a lot of screens to Kareem Hunt. I'd like that. Uh, go, going back to the guy who's covering uh, Jarvis Landry's Eric Murray, guys, who has allowed 20 of 26 balls to be caught. That's nice. Against him for 252 yards <laughs> and two touchdowns. So I'd say Landry, weather permitted, is most definite start this week. All right. Let's, what about this next game? The two and six Washington football team against the three and five Detroit Lions. This should be a fun one to not watch. <laughs> Quarterback Alex Smith, guys. He's back as the starter. I'm thinking a lot of drop downs. <laughs> yeah, he's going to feed McKissick just yeah, like he did last targets. week, guys. What the fuck? McKissick saw, yeah, four. We're happy if a wide targets. receiver gets that. What? <laughs> <laughs> McKissick's probably a running back too this week. Only because right? very PPR. strong flex. Only PPRs, yeah. He's gonna probably get a stupid stat line like a ten catch game. Mm-hmm. And Antonio Gibson's banged up as well. I think that has to do with why McKissick has uh, played so much. Eighty four percent snap share last week. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of wild. They were also it's, down. I'm pretty sure, weren't they? It's that and a mix of Antonio Gibson. Yes. They refuse to play him on third down. He's just they. They're really not using him too much in the passing game. Well, it's, no, it's really weird. It's be- It's because his pass blocking shit. I read on Twitter today that his is so bad, and McKissick. That's why then. Like okay. The top uh, percent. I was gonna say because Antonio NFL. Gibson's yeah. a converted wide receiver. He should be killing it in yeah, that game, yeah, but just yeah, he just, just can't pass. pass just can't pass block. But it's weird though, because McKissick, if he's going out, for he's not blocking wrong, either. Getting fourteen targets, he's no, not fast blocking either, right? I just said, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, keep it simple. I, I, against the Lions, you know, they allow the most. Start points both. The, yeah, they allow the most points to the running backs with thirty-four and a half points. That's enough game. for mm-hmm. both to be good. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they each get a touchdown. Twenty or fifteen or something like that. Uh, LaPlante, you got 30 seconds to talk I don't about need your 30 boy. Seconds. Go ahead. Terry McLaurin, wide receiver he's... one. He's going through a stretch of games that are you just salivate to have. Uh, he's been killing it lately. He's, you know, two straight games of 20 plus fantasy points. And this is with Alex Smith at, uh, running the show last week. I mean, eight out of eight games, seven plus targets. Just, just feeding right now. Yes, he is. He's really the only pass catcher yep. in this offense you want, guys. Logan Thomas, you can stream him if you want. But the Lions have been pretty good against tight ends all season, so no. it's not a sexy matchup yep. this week for Logan Thomas. Um, jumping over to the Lions, Stafford, guys, he's kind of been a little bit of a disappointment and this he gets year up against a wise. Tough and he got defense, a little bit. So... And a good defensive line. The void. He was banged the up void. Last week. Well, do you think he was banged up last week, or did he just get pulled because he wasn't? I mean, good? if he had a concussion, I think they it was because of the injury. But it also it also isn't going to help yeah. if he doesn't have his his boy out there, Kenny Galladay. Yeah, that definitely doesn't help at all. And then let's talk about this crowded uh, backfield again, guys. DeAndre Swift really uh, is looking like he was going to get more of a role, but it. Patricia loves Adrian Peterson still for some reason. What are we doing with DeAndre? I almost don't even want to start him. Washington is really good against running backs, and 
it just doesn't seem a very good matchup for him. If you have to play him, he's probably a he's got yeah, PPR a upside. Risky flex. He's got PPR upside. Well, yeah, but, flex. Ah, that, man, that's all. You're hoping he falls into the end zone. The problem. The problem is he's the pass catching catching back, and he hasn't seen over five targets in any game. That's what he could be so most, good man. for that offense, but they just don't like using them. Yeah, he will be after yeah. Patricia's fired next year. Or if you gotta pick one of these three season. running backs to play, I uh, you Obvious, know, I, yeah, Andrew Swift. Yeah, Andrew. If you know, I'd be flipping a coin. One side's Adrian Peterson, the other side's DeAndre Swift, and then whatever it lands on, it's Carry On Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're wild. I mean, that's how Matt Patricia <laughs> runs this offense. He's weird as hell. I don't understand it. He's pretty much copying the Bill Belichick way of not giving a shit. Yeah, he's kind of like uh, Marvin Jones right now with uh, Mark Kenny Galladay. <laughs> yeah, he had uh, three straight games of 13 plus fantasy points, two straight games of the TD. I mean, that's nice. He put a move on somebody last week to get in the end zone. No. Are you starting him against this? Wash? Ooh, no, he's huh? just uh, he doesn't get enough good. volume. He's he's t- he's touchdown dependent. It's that's his. That's how he's been. I mean, late in his uh, previous years, he was that you know deep target threat guy. But I don't think he has that speed in him anymore. And they're just using him as a red zone threat, kind of like uh, T.J. Hawkinson. You know, they were. I don't want it. any of the pass catchers. Yeah, they they use Danny Amendola uh, a lot on the inside route. Yeah, they did use Amadol a lot last week. Yeah, but once yeah, it gets to the red actually. zone, it's it's. I mean, a lot goes to T.J. Hawkinson. Uh, he's he's kind of emerging as that you know a breakout tight end this year. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. Amadol is not somebody you could trust every week. That last week was his first time um, scoring double digit fantasy, and, points and that was against the Vikings. One. Their uh, pass defense. He's if Kenny yes. Galladay's out for a long period of time. Danny Amendola is startable if he has a good matchup. If not, don't worry about him. Sure, sure. And then Hawkinson, you got him. You're starting. He's actually probably two this week uh, with the Travis Kelsey bye, Kittle being injured, Darren Waller's one, and then TJ Hawkinson's two for me. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, jumping over to the next game, the one and seven Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Mike Bland. Help me out. Seven, seven and two Green Bay Packers. Yeah, six, six and two Green Bay Packers. Uh, quarterback Jake Lutton, guys, pretty good showing last week. Twenty-two fantasy points, three hundred four yards, one touchdown, and a rushing one touchdown. interception. He hit DJ Chark and a he hit DJ Chark. How dare you not include his bomb. rushing touchdown? That thing was... He did have a rushing touchdown, and then he probably um, to pull within two points. And then had probably <laughs> had the worst he throw probably, that he had all game right after that probably, on the two point conversion. He probably should have ran it in and tried to do another spin move because that was terrible. <laughs> he had him open right away. He just waited. He threw it at like, the ground. Oh, it was bad. He spiked it was worse it right than Daniel Jones' two point yeah, attempt against the Buck a couple of weeks ago. It was bad. <laughs> But uh, I'd avoid him, guys. Packers' pass defense is pretty good. Yeah, the, and, uh, yeah. the past, Packers' pass defense, they're trying so hard this year to stop the pass that they are just getting demolished on the ground. So being that as it may, James Robinson's a running back, too, you know, with a lot of uh, upside this week. Yeah, uh, I would say he's a running back, too, this week because the problem is is he might not see a lot of volume because they the up. Packers. Yeah, but he gets work in the pass game, game a little bit. I know that Chris Thompson's eaten into oh, that definitely. a little bit, but he's definitely. James Robinson gets a lion's share of this load. Yeah, yeah, but definitely a high-end RB2, almost RB1 most weeks, but yeah, this week RB2. Uh. DJ Chark, like, what do you think about him after his blow up last week? Twelve targets in two out of his last three games. He, uh, he, he had like seven or eight catches last week. It depends Plus on Jair Lamont Alexander. Touchdown. I think Laplante said he had a concussion or something like that. Yeah, he the game. If he yes, plays, he had a concussion DJ on Chark Thursday probably night. is going to get shut down because Jair is one of the best shutdown corners we got, unless he's versus Anthelin. No, it's just that one week. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, if Jair Alexander is out, I would definitely be starting DJ Chark with full confidence. He could probably see double digit targets again. You know, just quick, quick little ten second side note. Just the Packers are stupid. They let Casey Hayward walk, Micah Hyde walk. They could have drafted Jair Alexander. This secondary. If they that. kept Casey Hayward, they would have never got Jair Alexander. You don't know that. What? <laughs> We know the Packers. They don't do right thing, right there. All right, all right, all right. You're right. Move on. Move on. It was supposed to be 10 seconds. Keelan Cole, though, guys, avoid. It's not someone Lutton seemed to have a rapport with. Didn't target him a whole lot. Um, Chris Connolly, though, he did get targeted a lot. Eight targets last week. Uh, Ike, what are you thinking about him? I'm, I, I'm forward? assuming he took over the second spot as long as Shane notes out and Keelan Cole just doesn't have a rapport with L- Lutton or whatever his name is, so I'm assuming he's the second guy. But once Minshew comes, sure. it's probably going to go sure. back to Keelan Cole. Yeah, because he liked him. I don't know why. I don't. To be honest with To be honest with you, I don't know if Minshew. Yeah, I went about it. Man. The way Jake, fair. the way Lutton looked, and uh, everything I yeah, hear, it's fair. Jacksonville likes him. So, uh, Tyler Eifert, guys. Avoid. He had five targets last week, eight fantasy points, but not someone you can trust at the tight end position. Jump it over for the Packers. Uh, great matchup for Aaron Rodgers this week. Obvious start, top five quarterback this week. Three touchdowns in three straight games. No, he's a beast. Anything else <laughs> I need to add? Him and uh, Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams. We're starting all fucking three of these guys this week. Yep. yep. Uh, 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 I don't like MVS though. In the plan, if you want, you can go. Uh, you could talk. He's about boomer him, bust, and that's I only super touchdown dependent. That's only because this offense is humming. I mean, he he had two touchdowns last week on two catches. Yep. <laughs> Did Alan Lazard? I seen that he was able to come off IR. He's still I don't, not. He's still a little play. sore as the last I saw. So I don't. Yeah, think he's I don't gonna play. I don't think he's playing this game. And once he b- becomes activated, MVS, it might be even <laughs> more boomer bust. Useless. Completely useless then. Yep. And then Bobby Tanyan, he's a start this week, guys. Jacksonville's defense gives up fifth most tight ends. But I seen he was either limited or did not practice today because of his knee. Yeah, that's not great. Which is a little scary. In that case, if he doesn't play, are you guys okay Ooh. starting Jay Sternberger? I guess if he does I wouldn't. I'm sure yeah. there's somebody else out there. There's got to be. Oh, yeah. Uh, jumping to the next game, the 3-4-1 and one Philadelphia Eagles versus the 2-7 and seven New York Giants. What do you guys think about Carson Wentz this week? He uh, struggled a little bit the last time uh, these two teams mashed up. I'd be starting him, but it's not going to be great. No, because he always throws You're not happy sessions. about it. It's insane. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, we're playing. How do you feel about Wentz uh, this week? This week? I, mean, I was going to say this year, he's kind of like the Jameis Winston. I mean, <laughs> he leads the league in interceptions with 12. I didn't mean Jameis is ball. <laughs> so it's Carson Wentz. Uh, he's, he's got a problem where he just holds <laughs> the ball too long. He's trying to make stuff happen out of nothing. He's, he's always done that. Lock. I mean, he's... He's going to be throwing a lot, but you're not confident in him. But you are confident in Miles right. Sanders, especially since he's going to be starting. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and he said that he is going to be a yep. uh, full Plus goal. Plus, the Scott becomes so, uh, useless. Well, unstartable, at least. Yeah, I mean, Doug Peterson might involve him a little bit in this game just to kind of ease the workload sure. on Miles Sanders, but down the stretch of Sanders is healthy, he's going to be pretty useless. By the way, why did I say he struggled against the Giants? Wentz struggled <laughs> against the Giants. He had 32 fantasy points the last time they played. Yeah, no surprise I'm an idiot, guys. Sorry about that. So, uh, <laughs> no, I wasn't apologizing to you. I was apologizing <laughs> to the six listeners we got. Uh, um, but the pass catchers in this offense, Travis Fulgram, Greg Ward, Jalen Rieger, maybe Elshon Jeffrey, maybe. Fulgram, uh, who's all the day. Guy to, to start the Fulgram and then, uh, I mean, Rieger a little bit. I kind of like him coming back. Low-end wide receiver three, I think, yeah. Yeah, 
I mean, those two are the only ones I'm confident in this yeah. week. May I mean, last week Dallas Goddard didn't get really. I'd be telling, starting Dallas Goddard too. But I'd be confident in him. The Carson Wentz loves his tight ends. Agreed. Agreed. Fire and Dallas Goddard up yep. this week, guys. Um, jumping over the Giants, <laughs> Dan Jones, Dirty Dan. Please, what do you guys think? <laughs> What do you mean? He ends, um, One game Matthew above Perry's 20 right fantasy points. That's not going to help you win a, win, a, win a matchup. He's been rough. <laughs> he can't stop He's turning the ball. He's got a case of the Winston. And it makes this whole offense pretty much useless, except for Sterling Shepard, I feel like. Maybe a Wayne Gallman has a little bit of value. I mean, Evan, Evan Ingram kind of heating up a little and bit. Derek. Yeah, Darius. Uh, yeah, I don't like him right now. Especially stirring Shepard like. back. Yep. He yeah, keeps I like getting the targets. Shepard a lot. Uh, wider... Yeah, he's a wide receiver three every week, I feel. Uh, but LaPlatt, what? Uh, we kind of skipped over him a little bit. You like Wayne uh, Ballman? Yeah, I guess. He's, he's not flashy, he's a very boring player. Nah, yeah, the Eagles run defense is pretty tough. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I'm not shying away from Gallman. I mean, you, you might have to play him just because he's a warm body at the running back position. <laughs> but the one I'm kind of intrigued of this week is probably uh, mm-hmm. Darius Slayton. And that's only because I think Sterling Shepard's going to draw the coverage of Darius Slay. I mean, and the, I don't even know who's going to be on Slayton. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Oh, who did you say? I'm sorry. I, you I'm think so? Darius Slade's going to be on Slate. Yeah, I, I don't I think Slade will go yeah. into the slot with Sterling. Ah, he's, he's been shadowing almost every yeah, cornerback. I, so I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I just think, obviously, Sterling Shepard is the better fantasy player. I think Darius Slayton is the better Interesting. real football player. Like, I feel like they're going to want to throw their best corner at yeah. Darius Slayton because he's explosive. And he, you know, he's True. one big play away and taking it to the house. Uh, jumping over the next game, guys. Six and three Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus three and six Carolina Panthers. Uh, I've been ripping on Tom all week, kind of. And since last week, guys, that was horrible. He was horrible against a team who just gives up fantasy points to everyone. Um, but how do you feel going into this week against Carolina? Last time we played Carolina, it wasn't pretty. So, I mean, you're definitely not you're definitely not going to be thrilled about starting him, but you still probably have to. Is he a quarterback one this week, LaPlante? Yeah, he all, like, speaking of that, he only had 10.68 yeah, fantasy well, points against Carolina. You don't have Mahomes this week. You don't have Matt Ryan this week. <sighs> I think he could be a uh, quarterback one yeah. this week. I mean, we are talking about Tom Brady here, guys. I mean, he dude, he's he, the king of bounce back. Yeah. He just he just got Antonio Brown in the lineup. Uh, it was a weird game script last week. They only they they only ran it like what six 10 times, times? I think. six times. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was under ten. Not, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, say the one thing the but, only so I. But six <laughs> times, get the fuck out of here! Who are you, Matt Nagy? The the one thing I will say, and you're, I mean, this is if you you know you pay attention to football and who's got a good defensive line and whatnot. Tom Brady has been really struggling under pressure this week, uh, this year. But if yeah, if has. if they can't get pressure on him, he's yes. lighting up defenses. Yep. So if you can get at him with four, I mean, he's gonna have a rough Ooh. time. That's basically it. Otherwise, he's startable every week. And then the backfield guys, for I don't even want to talk about it. You guys could go ahead. What? Yeah, the way it's kind of we'll rolling, it seems like Fournette's going to get the majority of these uh, opportunities. I mean, <laughs> and it pisses me off. I've been preaching about it for the last three, four weeks if, that Ronald Jones is better. It's just the I mean, that's. I mean, if he's better, why is he doing something up. wrong? I mean, he may be more talented, but... Uh, he, but he's not perfect, man. Bruce Arians is <laughs> like he. What, what I can't. 
Jo- Jones dropped a pass yeah, was... one week. He dropped a pass, yeah, was and then it was year. Leo's job the rest of the game. I'm saying hey, he's to always been known if you area. fumble, you're you know you yeah. get punished. I don't. But you're gonna have, you're, gonna, you're, think you're gonna have to look coach. at it just like it, it is with I Jones with Fournette though. If, as soon as Fournette makes a mistake, it's probably gonna go that way with Jones as well. I think that yeah. the one I'm more worried about is Mike we'll Evans in this offense. We'll see. I mean, he's so he's actually starting to do okay lately. Uh, he's he's still touchdown dependent. You got Antonio Brown coming into the offense. It was his first week, and I mean, he had five targets last week. I mean. Tom was trying to get him the ball, and then he got. Go ahead. Good news. Good news. I was gonna, just going to say <laughs> good news for Mike Evans is he doesn't have to uh, match up sure. against Marshawn Lattimore for the. But rest then you of also the have Chris Godwin too. <laughs> Tom Brady's a good quarterback. He's going to throw it to whoever's open. Uh, you can yeah, I don't even know why they had him up by that finger. Like Bounced right off ball. that thing every time. He he should have <laughs> sat. He should have said, yeah. You see that they were showing it on the, the telecast like yeah. before the game. He was trying to catch it without Not his index happen. finger being there. <laughs> like, what, are you, what in the world? Uh, <laughs> but Antonio Brown, it kind of looked like yeah. a little bit at times Brady was trying to force it to him last week. How do you feel about him this week? He's a flex. He's five targets last week. A low-end flex, I feel like. I ah. still I want to see more. You're, yeah, I you're not see really because thr- you're not really thrilled super about talented either, and right? he could do really good things from the slide in this offense. I think the same. Mm-hmm. He's, plan, he's think? a boomer bust flex until he gets more integrated into this offense. I mean, who knows? He may not even know the whole playbook. Right. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. And then uh Gronk yep. guys, obvious start at tight end. Uh, prior to last week, three straight games with 14 plus fantasy points. Last week, he could have had a decent day, too. Brady missed him on a couple throws. One was on a deep ball, too, unfortunately. Um, jumping over the Carolina Panthers, guys, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, what do you think about his? He struggled uh, against Tampa Bay last week? time, so I would not be going with him this time. Yeah, I think Tampa uh, Tampa Bay's going to jump out to an early lead. So, I mean, he's going to have the volume. He's going to be chucking it, a, I don't know about deep, but he's going to be throwing a lot this game. So he he won't be throwing it deep, guys. Trust me. <laughs> he will not be throwing it deep, which means DJ Moore will not be getting a lot of the targets. Oh, it's more frustrating, it's frustrating is seeing CMC Moore, hurt man. again. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nightmare. Uh, does that catapult Mike Davis back into the oh, and RB2. RB2? Only because uh, of volume. Over. Yeah, this is a tough matchup. Why are you telling me low end RB2? Like, there was one week where uh, one of the, I'm pretty sure most fantasy sites had yeah, him and I, at like. I don't know why. The because one. he's just not <laughs> getting targets in the passing they game were lo- anymore. They were Even when him. C-Mac was gone the last few weeks. It's because Curtis Samuel's become more part of this offense. I mean, Curtis Samuel, him, yeah. They're using a lot back, of... Right yes, receiver he hybrid. is. Yeah. Where the hell is Samuel? Guys, Samuel yeah. is just blowing Three it Three straight games with 17 plus weeks. fantasy it's, points. Uh... He's becoming... Yep. He's High definitely MYC3. fast relevant. Yeah. Crazy. No way you forgot obviously. to mention Robbie Anderson. He's been a solid, yeah. solid player every week for them. Never. Agreed. Tell Never, you ever. starting is Ian Thomas. Uh, jumping to the next game. Uh, three and five Denver Broncos versus the five and three Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Drew Locke. Hey, Kyle. Good, one. He had a good week last week. What do you think about him in this match? I think he'll have another good week. Go ahead, Ike. Raiders are struggling against quarterbacks the past few games. Plus, Drew Locke is just throwing the hell out of the ball. Only in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and he should this game, too, because the, yeah. the Raiders are better. So they should be ahead in this game, obviously. So Drew Locke yeah. should be. He's going to be chucking it, but he's only going to be good in the fourth great. quarter. For some reason, he can't figure out the first three quarters of the huh. game. That's fine, man. He won me quite a bit of money. Did you play Jerry Judy too? Because of that one quarter. Good call. <laughs> I did. I did. Um, play him again this week because he's cheap. 
Melvin Gordon, though. Definitely. Melvin Gordon, <laughs> Philip Lindsay. What are we doing here, boys? Playing one and hoping one hits the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin Gordon more than Philip Lindsay, I guess. Are you, though? I mean, are, this is are, a good matchup against the Raiders. Play? I mean, they have a tough time stopping the run as well as stopping the pass. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's going to be you Lindsay. You just can't get excited week. about Fuck it. Why not? Either. Yeah, I had Gordon down as uh, a sit it, this week. It, it honestly depends. I mean, they've been using Melvin Gordon in the red <laughs> zone, and then they've been kind of using Philip Lindsay in between the tackles. Melvin Gordon's been getting the passing game, but it's split right down the middle with their opportunities. It's just Melvin Gordon's getting more of the high priority looks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Gordon, guys, his last two games, uh, eight attempts, yeah. 26 yards, six attempts, 18 yards. Like I said, they've been getting down in games, too, so it's get, it's hard to run the ball. Uh, Ike, what are you thinking about uh, the pass catches and stuff? As long Jerry as Judy, Jerry Tim Judy Patrick, is KJ healthy, Hamler. I would be starting him with no doubt as a wide receiver three. He did. His route running is stupid good. He looked good as shit good. last week, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're getting a little too excited. They played the Falcons, it really is. but yes, yes, his still, route running is yeah. still good. His route they, running, they, is still good. his route running has been amazing <laughs> all year. Just he can't. He's having a tough time catching the ball. He's pretty low in catch rate. I think he's like bottom five. It's all right. Yeah, it also doesn't help that Drew Locke is. Uh... Yeah, top five worst in the league got uh, off target. Yep. Historically, too, so that, that probably does not help. He, sorry, he's actually the lowest in the league <laughs> at sixty-five and at sixty-five percent off target. Whoa, that's yeah, that's uh, that's a little crazy. Uh, but we yeah, start to uh, have Patrick too or not? I'd be, it'd be sketchy, but yeah, I'd be, I'd be nine starting targets as last week. Wide receiver three. Pretty sure he caught a touchdown, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then uh pat myself pat my pat myself on the back a little bit. Ten targets, KJ man. Hamler was gonna have a decent week last week. And he did. Two yep, yeah, two straight games with ten plus fantasy points. Uh DFS. He's probably guys just as expensive cheap, as Jerry uh, Judy, so I'd probably, probably go Jerry Judy over him in DFS. Uh, Judy is like only fifty four hundred or something like that. They had that breakout game though, so they might still not gonna be that much higher. Yeah, sure. Um, what are you guys feeling about Noah Fant? If he seems to be battling injuries, risky stuff. Yeah, he's and risky angles, if he's not angles, healthy. Really. If he's yeah. healthy, he's good. But yeah, if he's healthy, he's top ten tight end, absolutely. But it's it's just getting frustrated with that nagging ankle injury. Uh, jumping over to the Raiders, guys. Derek Carr. Uh, how you uh, about I him mean, this week? NFL wise, man, he's been playing really good this Hell year. Hell yeah. Like, really good, really efficient. I believe he leads the league in completion rating. But that doesn't help you in fantasy. Uh, you're looking for touchdowns. He's not really getting, you know, not many of those three touchdown games. Last week, he only had, I believe, like 180 yards passing. Uh, good thing is he doesn't turn the ball over. No, he don't turn the ball over, but he's a he's a QB, too, for Definitely. sure. Yeah. Then uh, Josh Jacobs, guys, since since his bye week, only two out of three games with twelve plus fantasy points, none over fourteen. Are we uh, getting worried about him that he's struggling to hit a ceiling? He's just pretty much hitting his floor every week. He's not involved in the passing game. It's what? Do you, how are we feeling about Josh Jacobs moving forward? The plan. Go ahead and you start. And then not great. I, I mean. He's really only scoring touchdowns when the Raiders win. I mean, this is a good chance that the Raiders win this week. Um, but last week, <laughs> last week, I I believe he only played on sixty percent of the snaps. I he was mean, a little injured. Remember, throughout that whole week, he had something bothering him. Yes, it was yes, just he did he'll be back in a big way. I wouldn't worry about him. He's touchdown dependent for a ceiling, but he's got a no. high floor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, his floor he's not even the guy. I feel like it's Devontae Booker, right? Getting 
more and more. I mean, they're using Jalen Rashard more in the past game, but Devontae Booker got eight carries last week. I mean, he just don't like it. <laughs> look damn, look damn good with I, those fresh. I don't. Th- well, who did the Raiders play last with week? Those eight carries too. The Browns, I'm pretty sure. No, that was their bye. No, I don't even no. think the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders uh, I mean, the Chargers the expected Chargers Devin Booker to be in the game, and then when they seen the guy go, they're like, "Who the hell is that?" Guy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Devontae yeah. shooting threes out here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Devin Booker's yeah, better anyways. basketball. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, avoid guys, Jalen Rashardy, all these seasons. Avoid rugs. Back to back games. So. Ugh. Uh. Yeah, what are we doing about the pass catchers besides Darren Waller? Don't even need yep. to mention him, really. Yeah, Tight end I mean, one I mean the, week, the probably, only one I'm like kind of, sort of confident in uh, is probably Nelson Aguilar. I mean, he has to catch the deep ball for a touchdown because he doesn't get enough targets. Yeah, he's yeah, definitely just, the uh, deep Which threat. doesn't make sense because yeah. why aren't they using yep. Henry Ruggs as a deep threat? He's just, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's John Gruden, man. He does what he wants. Yeah, let's just move on. I guess. Well, I guess. Lead us through these next All right, games, next game, sir. two and six, Los Angeles Chargers at the five and three Miami Dolphins. Uh, Justin Herbert, obvious start the way he's playing. I mean, you're a little less confident because this Miami Dolphins defense playing good. I was gonna. Say I'm sorry, this, Justin Herbert. Herbert though. Her, Herbert's been on fire. Like Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard. Like I heard Herbert, someone huh? call him the herbivore. <laughs> 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 But yeah, you're starting him. I like I mean, that he's, too. Just, he's been fucking on fire, man. Hey, you're a little scared with the Miami because the Miami Dolphins yeah, do is. have great corners, but Justin Herbert gives you a high floor. He's been running the ball. I mean, he's not afraid to throw the deep ball. I, I'd start him. Yeah, he's a little reminiscent of Brett Favre when he just chucks the ball with you know no fear. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, and and looks like a California boy here. here. Looks like a teenager. <laughs> but uh, Justin Jackson was ruled yes, out does. for this game. Uh, are we gonna get another uh, Kalen Balaj? It is going to be a Kalen Balaj sighting, guys. A Menage de trois Balaj. You're gonna be going to the Bellagio this week. I don't know Playing what to the do slots. with this backfield. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Kelly doesn't look good anymore. Tremaine Pope looked good in the one game he uh, played. But <laughs> Who knows with this up. running back? <laughs> Caleb Balazs is Caleb Balazs. I mean, he looked good out of the back. He looked good yep. running hey, the ball. The only, the only thing in the way of Caleb Balazs' su- success is Adam Gase, <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> it's Caleb Balazs time, man. <laughs> Uh, but let's move away from him and talk about more fantasy relevant players like Keenan Allen. He's an Start. obvious. Guy. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, uh, Mike Williams. Uh, he's. I he's, like him. I like him. Starting to blow up a little bit. Yeah. I got Fantasy. a question no, for you guys. Guy and How come when every time he around? goes up for a ball, it looks like he gets choke slammed into the ground? <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> I know. Exactly. I don't know why. He, he jumps up to the height of a top rope for a wrestling match and then comes down like he is. Choke slam from hell. <laughs> it's like a big show of choke slam. <laughs> but uh, you're you're starting. I mean, you're just you're risky with him just because uh, he's he is boomer bust. He doesn't. He's gotten seven plus targets in two straight games, but for some reason they like throwing it. Herbert likes throwing to Jalen Guyton. I mean, he's even riskier. I'd avoid him. He likes he really? likes to send it, man. And uh, Jalen Guyton's a deep guy. <laughs> they, he, I feel like Donald he throws Palm. a bomb to some weird guy every week. He's right? probably like, oh, look at this guy. Let's just send it to him. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Hunter the, Henry. I'll tell you. He's deep not balls. I'll tell you. That's fucking Hunter Henry, man. <laughs> no, he's very frustrated. He did target him in the red zone last week a couple times. One time was just out of Hunter's reach. But I did, he's it's as simple as Justin Herbert as likes to chuck the ball. Hunter Henry isn't running the deep routes. And uh, obviously, if it, if he ain't throwing deep, he's throwing to Keenan Allen. 
Uh, maybe they should uh, throw a Mart ahead. I don't think that's the their problem. Runs. They've uh, lost a lot. They're of not winning games because games, they man. can't control the tempo of the game. And their defense like low leads. Austin Eckler comes back soon though, so definitely. Yeah, that's nice, dude. He looked good in that video. On Does Twitter. he though? He I believe it he, I believe it when he's activated off IR. It was. I'm just worried because that injury was so nasty, man. The grade two hamstring closer to grade three because uh, that's nice. It, it was pretty. It said it was ripped off his bone almost, or it was or something. So it's like, e. uh, why? Why do you want him to? If you're the Chargers, why do you Fair want point. him to come back? You're two and six. You just gave him a contract extension last because uh, Anthony Lynn is trying to save his why job. Why do you want to risk him getting hurt again? Yep. Uh, so let's move on to the next team then, uh, the Fair Miami point. Dolphins. Uh, Dylan, check your watch. What time is it? I like that time. Two time. Two time. It's not, it's, uh, not Dame time yet. Yeah, we you're getting a little ahead of yourself there. Season, but, so uh, still, uh, two a time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's two basketball. Two balled out last week against the Cardinals, but he's still a risky start this week. Uh, the Chargers defense, uh, their secondary is pretty good. <laughs> Uh, it. Why is the Miami fan base so toxic? Weren't they just saying he was bad like a week ago before he just did this? Why? They're like, oh, should we replace Tua? Maybe we're going to replace <laughs> Tua with Trevor Lawrence or something stupid like that. Does this then? They're like, oh, my God, he's the savior. Yeah, uh, what's more ridiculous is ridiculous. Uh, Jordan Howard. Uh I mean, <laughs> talk about he, he, he's, not he, he's talk the Mike about. Evans of running backs. Yeah. He's they're only he's only gonna get, he, yeah he's only gonna get uh, points if they get in the red Extreme, zone. But we'll move like, on from him. Uh, Examinator. I believe it's Salmon. <laughs> Is it Salmon? But uh, Salmon. Yeah, yeah uh, we're avoiding him uh, un- Sal- until we Salmon see Ahmad? a little bit more from him. He's probably the sure. guy that don't, if you want well, to start a guy don't, running. Uh, in don't the be surprised if they roll out DeAndre Howard. Washington. They, they should trade like for him, him at the trade deadline. Uh, Fuck it. Put your King Grant there. I mean, yeah. yeah so it's good. Until you see more, because Miles Gaskin injuries, they don't know what they want to do. Miles but, Gaskin. Uh, how about Devontae Parker? Are you guys confident, confident in him this week? He might draw that Casey Hayward shadow. I like him every week, man. For mostly the rest of the year. Uh, well, Preston He's Williams went on IR, unfortunately. So that should just open up more targets. Yeah, his uh, remaining schedule after the Chargers this week. He's got Denver, which is a solid matchup. The Jets, which is a good matchup. Cincinnati is a solid matchup. Uh, but then it gets tougher for the fantasy playoffs. He's got <laughs> Kansas City week four, New England or week yeah, four, week I, fourteen and uh, and, New England week fifteen. And probably Mike Jacecki is the only pass catchers I want to play in this offense until. I know why Jacecki. That's why I said maybe. And, yeah, Jacecki four less targets too, in three bro. straight games. For some reason, they like yeah. Am Shaheen. <laughs> they use all their tight ends. That's just that's the fad in the NFL right now is a lot of three tight end sets and uh, yeah. two or three yeah, tight end weird. sets. So I, don't, I don't like seeing like Adam Shaheen doing good. It's weird. But, uh, <laughs> I don't like seeing it. He was supposed to be a baby Gronk. You don't like seeing Adam Shaheen do good. How the hell? I, uh, how, how the hell do you think I can? I feel as bear. We'll fans. move on to the next like, game. What the fuck? This one's uh, this one could be a really uh, fantasy relevant <laughs> game, guys. Uh, this one has a lot of potential. Yeah, this will be a, this will be a good football to game too, one. just in general. It'll Seven and two, Buffalo Bills at the five and three Arizona Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen, uh, obvious start. Yeah, I mean, he lit he lit up the Seahawks last week. I mean, it is predictably, but yeah. Shut up! No, he's not. Do you do you really Perhaps want me to look up the stats right now? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we're, just, uh, we're gonna move on Matter to the more fact, uh, pressing part of this offense, <laughs> the running back position. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. Uh, who, who do you guys want for the rest of the year going down the stretch? 
Uh, you got to pick one. No, I don't want one. Neither. I'm just gonna say Devin Singletary, so it's different than Zach Moss. Ma- Zach Moss. Ma- <laughs> Zach Moss. Then. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to friend Zach. Uh, it, he made a funny the, the other day. He <laughs> said uh, Devin Singletary had six fantasy points on the first drive for the Bills last week. Uh, t- guys, big old fan zero. Had, uh, how many fantasy points he finished with? <laughs> Come on, I don't know. Like, no, I thought he we finished said what he finished with the rest, the rest of the, rest of the uh, game. <laughs> awesome, guys. That'd be that'd have been, that'd have been uh, funny. It's fantastic. That'd have been funnier if he fumbled too and he went. Back. Go ahead, the plan. Sorry, keep interrupting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Zach Moss is the one I'm going to be going with this, uh, in this <laughs> offense only because he's getting the red zone touches. Uh, it's a true running back by committee. They're going pretty much 50 50 on the snap share. But you hate, you hate both of them. Yeah. I literally just said and that. Zach but... Moss <laughs> the red zone guys, so obviously, that's yeah. nothing new. We're going to move Sorry, on to the obvious start. Idiot, Stephon Diggs, uh, he's <laughs> been the steal of the year in the wide receiver position, honestly, the way he's been drafted. And we're going to continue to start him. But how do you feel about Smokey Brown and uh, Cole Beasley? Smokey Brown over Beasley. Well, obvious. Like, like, what? Are, like, wide receiver two, wide receiver three. I mean, uh, Beasley Brown... would be lucky to if he would be making a lineup at flex spot. I don't think he's that great. He's only had one game over ten fantasy points the last three games. So, I mean, yeah, he had eleven targets last week, man. That's a lot for John Brown. Beasley Bro. becomes less relevant. Beasley's. The yeah, West Walker of this offense. He's only running the short routes, and I mean, he saw Smokey Brown saw eleven targets last week because they were playing the Seahawks. I mean, <laughs> he was running deep every Quinn time. Dunbar was probably on him, so yeah. I mean, just allowing gashed after if, after. <laughs> if nah, no, it's not five great. targets in two games, guys. If not they're in close good games, they'll probably Beasley be used right more. But if they're in blowouts, he's he's useless. But uh, Dawson Knox, uh, tight end for the top. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, he came back off the IR. I mean, until he shows something more. We're just going to move on to the Cardinals. Uh, The hot man himself, Kyler Murray, this year. He's been uh, (laughs) the hot man man. this year. Did you just call him hot? (laughs) He's got eight rushing touchdowns on the year. I mean, he just broke 100 yards rushing last week. I mean, this guy's been – Yeah, obvious start. Yeah. there's news. Uh, Ken and Drake uh, was at practice this week. Uh, he, he's going to be a game time decision. Uh, but even even so, uh, what do you guys think about Chase Edmonds then? If you have to, yeah. If Drake's there, definitely a little bit. Edmonds down. You know, unfortunately, I know people have been. People been, better. Yeah, people you, have been banking on. You think Edmonds they're gonna just be, give? Uh, you think they're gonna give Kenyon Drake see, the, the major ish. load coming off no, this right away? No. Seventy thirty. No. I they. Uh, I'd say Drake probably get sixty forty. Drake could probably get. There. Yeah, this might be uh, maybe the final carries. week. Uh, that Chase Edmonds is gonna get yeah. that uh, crazy volume. That yeah. Off I don't expect twenty five carries, but like fifteen to twenty, sure. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I mean, being a Chase Edmonds owner myself, I'm kind of actually a little bit more excited when Kenny Drake comes back because Edmonds was way more efficient with Drake on the field. I don't know why. but uh, Weird, huh? No, and he was being got the Korean They were using legs, him in man. the pass game a lot more. They didn't really use him in the pass game with Kenny Drake out this week. Yep. It was it was weird. They like switched roles. So, I mean, maybe he just thrives more as a pass catching back. But uh, I wish they would have used Dino Benjamin a little bit, but no. Fuck he hit. Insane. Yeah, Edmonds I mean, you ain't gonna see that unless Kenny drinks out again. Uh, kind of wild. But you ruined my uh, smooth segue into the pass catching with DeAndre Hopkins. So we're just gonna talk. <laughs> He's obvious start. Must start. Uh, but Christian Kirk, he's bursting on the scene. Four straight mm-hmm. games, 10 plus fantasy points. I mean, you guys starting him? Ah, and wire suit nope. three starting for sure. I'd be excited. I feel yeah, like, but why he, can't look at I get his excited numbers excited lately, him. man? Like I, 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 can't, I, uh, I, I, I know yeah. as an owner, I 
I plugged him in last week. He had a good week, obviously. But the, I still can't get I, excited for for some reason. I, it's gonna be hard for me to get, get you me excited. excited how about, how hey, about like, three straight twenty plus fantasy point games? I mean, it's nice to see, but I mean, he's not getting a whole lot of targets. That's his only problem. And they're using him as the deep threat. I mean, Kyler Murray's been accurate with the deep threat, but it's he's not going to catch every deep ball. That's my only concern with him. He's he's been a he's been a little touchdown dependent, but I mean, if he continues it, keep playing him. Yeah, no, I mean, I am, and all fantasy owners should be. He has had five straight games of 10 plus fantasy points, and like you said, tw- in the 20s. Maybe, the last a, maybe weeks, you uh, needed a little blue Maybe pill I to should help just you. get excited for it. Man. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to move on to the next game. Uh, another good game. Yeah, of the maybe week. something. Uh, this is six Seattle Seahawks. Your excuse. Versus the uh, five and three <laughs> Los Angeles <laughs> Rams. Uh, I think he's still the MVP favorite on this uh, for the year, even though he had a rough week last week. But Russell Wilson, obvious start. I mean, I mean, if you're gonna make me say it, why the hell not? I mean, he did he trap game this week. One team he historically struggles against is the Rams. He's two and six in their in his career <laughs> against them. So I mean, maybe Aaron Donald gets to him. I don't know what the hell the problem is, but just don't be surprised. Uh, maybe uh, if Boy, not, it's, it's maybe Sean or not. Can <laughs> a bit, eh? But uh, <laughs> we'll move on to Chris Carson. Then uh, he's been hampered by an injury, but if he's not injured, you're starting him. The running back in this offense is too valuable not to start. Yeah, but if he is injured, uh, like I just said, yeah. DJ Dallas. I mean, he's I think a he's an easy plug and play. Hey, what do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, you yeah, want the two running straight back games with ten plus fantasy yeah, points he's, and he's not efficient in the run right. game, but he gets used in the pass game. That's that's what you like to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about pass game, the studs of the year, probably the best combination of wide receivers we got on a team at the moment, besides Julio and Calvin Ridley. Can we stop saying Ty Lockett's the number one in this offense now? Why? One game in his last Absolutely five ten not. plus fantasy points, and that only game was a fifty three. Insane, but other than that, <laughs> I think I remember, good. I think I remember hearing that week points. was like the eighth best ever fantasy output for a wide receiver, 53 points. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unfortunately, it just it's, varies every He's week, legit like a boomer bust, like the weirdest boomer bust wide receiver two ever. Like he could, if you have him at wide receiver two, he could get you five points or he could get you like 20. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's obviously skewed because of that. You're not He's confident, in it, but you're starting number five. Oh, yeah. Right yeah, you too have powerful. to start him. Obviously, it is is it's insane what this. Uh, but he's not the number one no more. No, he, he's probably not the number one in my opinion. It's it seems like Russell Wilson likes to be force feeding uh, DK Metcalf, <laughs> and uh, this is gonna be a tough one for DK though. This, well, it depends on what side of the field he's oh, okay. on. Uh, Jalen Ramsey was interviewed today saying he's not. Yeah, I, that I might think, be though. the dumbest decision. Yeah, well, from, I thought that was a little weird. Yeah, he hasn't really shadowed. Uh, he's well, playing, he said he hasn't really shadowed a whole lot this That he's year, been right? mainly on. I mean, it's just a part of the defensive scheme for the Rams, I think. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's. Yeah, they, it's a new defensive coordinator, right? And he's obviously the right sure. defense is good. I think so it, done, I, I wouldn't be job, surprised, so though, if DK Metcalf, team, but... if they're purposely lining him up opposite of. They will. And he and he tears it up. I wouldn't be surprised if they. They will put Ramsey on. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah I'm sure they this. will. Because yeah. it. They, they need He's to, the best they, guy to I mean, match up for DK. He's a little smaller than DK because DK is huge and a beast, but. Yep. I yeah, Jalen Ramsey's a good. Yeah, the way I want them to, I think it'll be an awesome watch. TK to match up on each other, and I think Jalen Ramsey and Tre'Davious White. Yeah, and Ramsey's just he's more physical. I think he'll be able to get in Metcalf's head a little bit. But well, that's enough about this uh, wide receivers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's talk about the tight ends for five seconds. (laughs) Greg Olson's 
uh, if you have to start one, it's Greg Olson, but that's just because this offense is hot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm yes, I'm fire. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams, though, uh, you're starting any quarterback that's playing the Seahawks this year. Yep. I mean, Jared Don't Goff, have to think about it, he, He's. I don't like it. It's not sexy, but you're playing him. <laughs> but uh, go ahead. Especially yep. without the weather, yeah. You like it better. Uh, like it this if the weather was fine, I'd still be going. Uh, Jared Goff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the only thing that I'm a little scared of is Cooper Cup was questionable. I I expect him to play, but if he doesn't, I mean, maybe Josh Reynolds a sneaky play in the flex. I mean, yes, sir. Uh, but the the clear number one in this offense is Bobby Trees. I mean, he's kind of regressed to the mean a little bit more, getting more touchdowns this year. He's at uh, six of eight games, 10 plus fantasy points. So. <laughs> in Dylan's words, he's the target beast. <laughs> so we're uh, starting him. I mean, especially against the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. Stay him all against the Seahawks, except for Tyler Higby and Gerald Everett. And uh, I'm sure. And who knows about the running backs? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure you guys noticed I skipped over the running backs. That was on purpose. I don't think <laughs> you guys want to start with the running backs. Exactly. No, that's true. I mean, unfortunately, yep. Ike, we know how it is. We're start- we've are we started Daryl Henderson, I feel like, the last five weeks in one of our leagues, unfortunately, just because. It's either an injury or a running back is stupid. Or nightmare because of injuries. I do want to point out that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do want to point out, though, Gerald Everett saw nine targets their last game they played. Seattle really yeah. good against tight yeah, ends, though, for some reason. At least four targets in his last four games. Yeah, so. Bobby <laughs> Keep That it would be the answer right there. <laughs> but, I mean, Jamal Bobby Adams, Edgar, he's been out. Never mind. Uh, he, play, he came back last week. Oh, it didn't help, huh? <laughs> they like. For... He's, he's their best. It's weird. They use he's their Jamal best Adams pass rusher, probably. Pass rusher sometimes. I know that's weird to say because he's a safety, obviously. But he, yeah, they use him as the pass rusher in the pass job. Pass Bobby Wagner yeah, coverage, it's real weird. <laughs> but uh, back to the tight ends. I mean, I'm choosing Gerald mm-hmm. Everett probably for the rest of the year over Higby. How about you? I am too. I don't like Higby. Yeah, that was another guy that uh, Based Higby off was three, another guy fantasy Twitter just loved this year and just been a complete disappointment. Besides, this goes to show that you can't yeah. go off. He is someone we didn't really buy year. into, which is a good. Yes, guys, please. Half a year. Base your, yeah. Base yeah. your sample size. More, off more than that. three. I think that's the answer. A just more than three. <laughs> Eight games, but uh, like that. <laughs> move on to yes. uh, this next game. This one uh, might be a little bit of a blowout. We got the four and five uh, San Francisco 49ers at the six and two New Orleans Saints. They're starting to get back on track. Uh, I mean, Michael Thomas is finally back. Woohoo, fantasy Ornos. I mean, you're, you're happy to see that. But uh, Nick Mullins, just put him on your bench. I mean, yep. <laughs> Jarek McKinnon, though. Uh, Strong with, flex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with uh, Raheem Mostert still not designated to come off IR yet. You got Seven Coleman. He's doubtful to play. I mean, McKinnon's probably going to see a large uh, workload this week. Uh, you might see a little bit of Jermichael Hasty, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Watch him use Hasty a lot this week just for no apparent reason. Yeah, and then uh, Shanahan's going to come out with an excuse <laughs> that I had to change the game plan at the last second, blah, blah, yep. <laughs> But uh, So that's enough, of that, uh, that's enough of that running back committee. Uh, the wide receivers, uh, Debo Samuel, he's uh, ruled out for this game. Uh, I, hopefully he's back. Uh, probably not. I, I know he was ruled out and he's on the COVID list. But because that, how do you guys feel about Ayuk? Brandon Ayuk, you know, this this rookie's making a strong case. I like him. I feel like Lamar is going to be on him, though. Yeah. Yeah. If... Tall receivers, man. Brandon yeah. Ayuk, tall. Lamar only scares uh, Mike Evans. It's true. <laughs> Something Mike. He's something... got speed, though. Yeah. I'd be starting him as a wide receiver he's three. Speedy, Mike. Yeah, they like to run Mike a lot of him, get. He's going to be in that gadget time. role one like time. Debo Samuel was. So they don't be surprised if he yeah. even gets like five rushing attempts. He'll be a low. Go ahead. 
and then uh, nah. Kendrick Bourne is also back this week. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily love him for fantasy purposes. With IU that back too, makes I, that James pretty much was a random week for him. Thirty-point week last week. Yeah, he's probably not going to see that again. Yeah. Uh, how about the tight end uh-huh. in this offense, Jordan Reed, <laughs> lost Welly? You feel like either of them? Uh, Jordan Reed's okay. Uh, yeah, if he's – it's a decent you streaming add, option. He made this – You could have ended your analysis at okay and I would have been fine with it. If yeah. you need him, go ahead and do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Six to eight Before or after he gets expect, hurt. Uh, ho- and exactly. Hopefully he falls So the we'll talk game. about the uh, more juicy <clears throat> fantasy part mm-hmm. of this uh, matchup, the New Orleans Saints. Drew Brees, uh, I mean – He's still not throwing deep, but he's scoring touchdowns now. He's uh, three out of the last four games, 22-plus fantasy points. Uh, I think he's a low-end QB1, high-end QB2. How about you guys? Yeah. Yeah, Niners yeah, defense is Yeah, I don't like Breeze moving might, forward, but might. I like him in this <laughs> matchup. But uh, the other person that is a little, definitely going to have a good a game, lot. Uh, Alvin Kamara, obvious start. Him and Delvin Cook are battling it out for the number one running back this year. Alvin Kamara has finished as a running back one every week he's played. Super weird, huh? Yeah. It, that would have been crazy. Delvin Cook, too, but he got hurt, <laughs> Pretty unfortunately. Crazy. I mean, technically, yeah. he's still been a running back one every game he's played, too. It's just that one game he didn't play. True. <laughs> I guess, yeah. But uh, because Alvin Kamara and this offense are doing so well, uh, are you guys confident maybe rolling out Latavius Murray this week? Nah. Not anymore. Nah. I have him in a few leagues, and I uh, I can't <clears throat> be comfortable Four starting him. I even started to Michael Hayes. He's now falling in the end zone week. for Rush some reason. Bad idea, nah, but yeah, not worth it. He's uh, definitely regressed back to his handcuff role. Uh, yeah. Bench until – you know, God forbid, an injury to Kamara. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Michael Thomas, like I said, back in the lineup. Uh, low end wide receiver one. I mean, he's probably just getting back into the flow of things last week. Yeah, he'll be fine for you. Yeah, I, I, I expect him. To, yeah, expect him to be in this offense and, and flowing just like normal. Yeah, he'll, he'll, but, uh, he'll be good. But Emmanuel Sanders off the COVID IR list and, and balling out last night, uh, last week. You guys think he's a decent flex, maybe wide receiver for you this week? Flex. When he's healthy, he puts up decent fantasy numbers. Yeah. Uh, you guys know how I feel sure. about the That's fair. But how about the tight end one in this offense? You, you comfortable starting, starting Jared Cook? Yep. He scores 10 points. That's what we yeah. need. Yeah. Because of the position depth, but yep. other than that, yeah. But Drew Brees has some sort of confidence in him. For yeah, some very touchdown oh. dependent. And yeah, now that he, Michael he, Thomas I mean, is back, he maybe it's Michael Thomas. Throw, right? But yeah, I'd have to agree. I say so, anyways. But uh, like I said, also ten plus points. That's all we're looking for with the tight end. <laughs> so we'll move on to the next game. Uh, the two and five, two and five and one Cincinnati. Joe Burrows uh, <laughs> versus the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Obviously, this is going to be a game where I think the Steelers are going to come out undefeated again. But you guys think that maybe the Bengals give them a little bit of a fight? Big Ben might not play because of COVID, right? Hey, he's got to pass some tests, but yeah. it's he, If he doesn't play, don't be surprised if the Bengals win. Yeah. It was just, it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. But it, yeah, it was just a close yeah. contact with somebody. It's not been happening. Yeah, pay COVID, attention so to it just to be safe. But he's most likely going to play Saturday or uh, Sunday morning, and he's fine. But we'll talk about the Bengals first. Uh, Joe Burrow. This Pittsburgh's defense is a serious thing. He's a risky start this week, but he might be well just because of volume. This defense is terrible. I mean, uh. Good call, man. I was just going to say that uh, the Bengals might be down, by, if Ben plays, might be down by two touch, two touch, yeah, two touchdowns in the first quarter, and he, he we might see another 
Yeah, he's, he's going to have a, a very low ceiling 40 this or 50 week, but a very high floor. Girl. I mean, you're rolling him out there only if you're desperate, in my opinion. There's better options, I think, out there. But you got a little positivity from us, so that's always good. But, Definitely. Mm-hmm. But better the negative like part of this game is uh, Joe Mixon was ruled out. He went through. He's – yeah, he's been struggling with that uh, foot injury. He didn't practice at all after yeah, a bye week. That's not man. a good sign. But because of that, uh, yeah, not Gio good. Bernard, you're plugging him in this week. Uh, he's a decent RB2. I mean, two straight games with 20-plus fantasy points in uh, his in Mixon's absence. It'll be good. Hey, yes, probably, sir. Yeah, he probably won't have much on the yeah, ground against this good Steelers run defense, but guy. he's going to be involved in the pass game, and that's what you'd like to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another guy i like to say, oh, yeah, about is uh, Tyler Boyd. Oh, yeah. He's kind of carving out a role that he's the number one wide receiver in this offense, not A.J. He's, Green anymore. He's been the number one for the past, what, two or three years? Yeah, Tyler because, Boyd, because A.J. Of, Green's injuries and just age catching up with him. Yeah, you just, I mean, everyone was so hyped on A.J. Green in the beginning of the season yeah. being the number sure, one. Sure, yeah, just because him coming back, he's got that talent, but it shows he's a little rust, rusted up. Yeah. Yeah, he's a risky flex the, from yeah, here on out. Yeah, the injuries have taken on uh, A.J. Green, yeah. unfortunately. T. Higgins, he's kind of overtaken his role. Super consistent, that. man. T. Higgins, for sure. It's insane. I didn't expect it from them this year. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like rookie wide receivers have been one of the lineups to be fully confident. It's, yeah, awesome. it's weird to see a rookie wide receiver. Didn't expect it him. But you like to see it. Yeah, hell yeah. Yep. And the tight end in this offense is irrelevant, so we're going <laughs> to avoid him. And his name is Drew Sample, but we're avoiding him. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, obviously pay attention to Big Ben, but you're starting him. Yeah. If, you play him. Uh, if not, you are not starting Mason Rudolph. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> but James Conner, you are starting. I know he had a bum week last week against a very good matchup in the Cowboys. Yep. Yeah, he, he was the bust for sure. One of those weird fantasy days, man, where you think the matchup. It, yep. The, the Steelers were playing down the whole game. That's why they couldn't run the ball. They were playing down against the yeah, Dallas defense. Yeah, you're confident like, with this uh, another good matchup. I mean, if he sucks this week, then then, then you're, you're a little. Like, what the hell? <laughs> but yep, yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, Six straight 40, 14 plus fantasy games before and you're still that starting bust. He's doing just <laughs> fine. Yeah, he's getting the volume as long as the Pittsburgh Steelers are up. But uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, he's kind of coming around. He's are back. You are you confident in starting him now as a wide receiver two? Yep. Really good wide receiver three, solid wide receiver two. Yeah, they're trying. They say to be. He must have got that uh, bit, uh, thing in Madden. That kind of makes you wonder. Frustrated receiver. Behind the scenes a little <laughs> bit about not getting the ball enough. <laughs> yeah, they yep. legit called, yep. I think it was a drive last involved, week or so two weeks ago, they legit called it the Juju drive where it went to him like the whole drive. Yeah, I'll be honest with you guys. In this matchup, I think all three of these receivers are startable with Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. Except for James Washington, yeah, you're starting pretty much everybody in this offense. Agreed. Yes, sir. Dylan three. used to hate him, but he's got three straight games with 10 points. Eric Ebrard, too. Starting him, guys. <laughs> Top 10. Yep, 10. Unfortunately, numbers don't lie, so. No matter how many miles there are to feed in this offense, apparently it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, uh, on to Sunday Eric Night Football. 6-2 uh, and two Baltimore Ravens versus, uh, I want to say the 3-5. Three three and five. Yeah, something like that. 3-5 and five New England Patriots. I mean, and they're only three it's wins. weird to say they're that bad right now, but. Yeah, it, Maybe if they could play the Jets every week, they'd be above 500. <laughs> uh, uh, they barely won, though, guy. Good. <laughs> no, Joe Flacco and, uh, because their defense bit. is not good uh, anymore, uh, I think Lamar Jackson, he's going to be a decent QB one this week. Probably a little bit more low end because his passing volume is not good. Not going to lie. I would not be surprised if Bill Belichick figures out the way to stop Lamar again. 
But this sh- this should be a a good yeah, week no, for like Lamar. He needs to get back to being a top quarterback in fantasy. Yeah, if uh, I just don't think the England New England defense has the personnel to stop Lamar. Like they have the mind to build Belichick to do sure. it. Sure. Yep. But I don't know if they have the speed to keep up with them. Yeah. But uh, J.K. Dobbins, uh, Gus Edwards, and uh, the questionable Mark Ingram. Uh, yeah, if if he plays, I'm not confident in anybody like here. he's going to play, unfortunately. Nope. Uh, but if he let does, me ask you guys. Uh, probably start I mean, J.K. I know, Dobbins not a lot of or Gus Edwards. Not a lot of. Well, you, let me finish my question. <laughs> Not a lot it's of people Dobbin. are not a part of this Dobbins. offense. But if you have to, rank <laughs> these guys for the rest of the season who you, who you want. He's probably going to throw in Marquise Brown. Dobbins, Edwards, Ingram. <laughs> oh, you uh, wanted Marquise Brown in there? Yeah. <laughs> They'll he probably tell him to shut up. Shut up and go block. Shut up. We the run ball. the ball. <laughs> <laughs> We're a high school <laughs> offense. We only run the ball. <laughs> nope. Not no more. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood Brown. He's, he's almost bench worthy, but he is the one B in this offense to the one A Mark Andrews, and you're <laughs> he's It's more like the 1C and 1D right now because this offense is just struggling (laughs) hard. Yeah, it's super. Two weeks. Fucking fucking Willie. And that was only because they were down. Right? Or was that two weeks ago? Give the ball to Dobbins more, man. Ah. I'm just saying Mark Andrews is probably more. uh, He's. Honestly, he's probably the most trustworthy guy. Exactly. I would take him over Hollywood Brown at this point. Fuck yeah. Well, yeah, I, just, I don't understand he why. Three straight games under ten it's points. Kind of confusing. Guys. It is confusing. What Hopefully, they... this offense gets, ah. their, gets their shit together because it was a lot better when it was. <laughs> you know, or is it just the fact that Mark Andrews has came back down to earth where he's supposed to be. Cause it was some weird number last year. Like he only was, well, yeah. Cause Hayden Hurst was there too. The snaps, and Nick Boyle, he was they had a lot of weapons last year. Touchdown every week. This. Well, here I can still going to let you know he's week six, 54% of the snaps. Uh, week eight. I don't know why they aren't the playing him only. as much. Week nine. They probably on the run the plays. They probably put Nick. Boyle. There's just not a lot of volume there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think everybody is. <laughs> uh, yeah, another offense tell, that's frustrating is this New offense. England Patriots offense. Uh, Cam Newton. Uh, I guess he's good. He's he's a high floor, low ceiling uh, QB one. He's not passing the ball well this year, guys. He's only got two passing touchdowns, and I believe it was seven interceptions. Only only one 300-yard passing game. But uh, the reason he's got a high floor is because he's got eight like rushing it. touchdowns Sorry. on the Go season. Ahead. He's <laughs> stupid. He's not afraid to punch it into the end zone. Go on. Go. I don't like anybody in this offense. This I don't like, not even I don't like this matchup yeah. is what all, all I was going to say. I don't like this matchup for Cam. Yeah, I don't care. Come on, <laughs> man. If uh, Marlon Humphrey's <laughs> playing, uh, I don't like any receiver. You're really going to throw in Jacoby Myers and be like, you know what? I trust him this week to get me at least 10 fantasy points. <laughs> I was going to say. If he does it this week, then yes. But You uh, know what? I think he's going to get him no. the ball a lot this week. I know <laughs> it. I see, I see this being a James White game because <clears throat> Cam's not going to have time to throw the ball. Hopefully. Or Damian Harris, maybe. Yeah. Shocker. Nah, he's banged and, uh, up, though. We'll just Fortunately, mention very quickly uh, Demir Bird. Uh, eh, risky flex, especially against this, this matchup. Week. I would probably find a different. Yeah. Avoid different Nikhil one. Harry, too, even if he plays. Yep. Uh, there's not many people in this yeah, passing offense you want. Him. So nope. we'll move on to the last game on the slate uh, Monday Night Football. Uh, this one's. 
Kind of. Why didn't they put the Seahawk one on there? <laughs> Can't you? Fl- Isn't it too early yeah. to flex games or something? Yeah, I, maybe uh, it'll surprise us like that Jets Patriots game. Why they, they, uh, you know, last kept second. This shit game on <laughs> I didn't even like that game. We. But we should probably mention yeah. who's actually it was playing. Was a decent entertainment. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the three and five uh, Minnesota yeah. Vikings at the five and four Chicago Bears, a divisional matchup. Oh. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Uh, I mean, recently, I mean, he's been efficient. Four touchdowns, zero interceptions, last two games, but only three hundred and eighty yards, and that's uh, only seventeen attempts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the and game. That'd be uh, Dalvin Cook is a monster. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> and the only way I see Cook. Uh, Cousins doing well as if they're down and he just has to chuck the ball, but it's the Bears' offense. This could be just a, an ugly game. Their defense. He's going to get stacked. Yeah, so I'm I'm trying to find other options out yeah, there than Kirk Cousins it's probably be, benching it's this be week. Super ugly, man. It's going to be super ugly. I'm just a little nervous. I mean, I know this isn't yes, the same Bears rush defense as was the last two seasons, but Delvin Cook struggles against. The I Bears. think it's just a uh, national I, thing. I, I mean, they play each other twice a year. They Delvin know their Cook scheme owner, a little. But... You know, they know each other's schemes a little bit. That's all. Weird. Yeah. Uh, there's a first for everything. Man, Nagy's never <laughs> lost to the Vikings. We'll move on to uh, the very inconsistent part of this offense because Dalvin Cook has been taking over the offense yeah. of the wide receivers. Adam Thielen, uh, I mean, you'd like to see it. He leads the team in eight red zone targets. This uh, is not a good one for him if you're expecting a lot of points. He, he might get lucky with a touchdown if, if they get in the red zone. Who sure. knows? Kyle Fuller, I would no. assume, is going to be on him. I'll be straight up honest with you. I don't know who's scoring a touchdown in this week. In this, Irv Smith. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Like it was Irv Smith last week. It's Adam Thielen one week. It's it's Dalvin Cook for four touchdowns. Kirk Cousins has always loved tight ends in the red zone. Even with Kyle Rudolph, it seems to be Irv Smith now as number one. So I like him. Yeah, he's just touchdown. Touchdown, to pay, yeah. But he'd be a solid streaming offer, uh, streaming option this week just because of red zone threats. Uh, Justin Jefferson. Would you play him this week? Super sketchy. Yeah, he plays a lot in the slot. Yeah, yeah it's just not a lot of volume there, the last two so. weeks. With the yeah. yeah, he's never given a lot of volume. It's more of if he can bust the big play. Yeah, he, he's more of the deep threat no. in this uh, offense. But uh, you and you touched on Kyle Rudolph a little bit. Uh on the year, he's only got 19 targets to Irv Smith's 21. I've, we're avoiding <laughs> That's so weird that those two are – they're just like, you know what, Irv Smith, we don't trust you. Let's just keep going with the old Kyle Rudolph. <laughs> it could be they're in a lot of two tight end sets because they want to run the ball too. Who knows? Yep. But uh, probably uh, one of the uh, ugliest defense uh, offenses in the league, uh, according to – I'm proud. According to Dylan, it's uh, probably one of the worst Bears offenses he's ever seen. Please don't start Nick Foles, Foles team, ever. Guys. I don't Does ever want to see Nick Bears Foles in a starting lineup for fantasy. Throughout the years. I mean, <laughs> Dylan's <laughs> still on the, the better offense offenses. Chad Hutchinson. That, 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 that looked better than what we saw the last couple of weeks. Guys, this is just... I, I mean, don't think it's going to matter. It was announced right before we started the podcast, actually, that Nagy gave up play calling. I personally don't think that's going to help. Right back play, the, bad. The Bears offensive line is so bad. The way bad. he runs, the Quarterback whack. play is bad. I yeah, I talk about the running uh, back, David Montgomery. He got yeah, banged guys. up a little last week. Had a concussion. Uh, he hasn't been in practice all week. Monitor that. Uh, I mean, you're probably starting him just because of his high value. Nice one touchdown this year. Yeah, he's he's. I mean, you would have to think he'd regress back to the mean and get and find the end zone here. Hopefully, but it's our offense. <laughs> hey, the offensive line. The offensive line gets no push, man. They can't. You you could put. Alvin Kamara behind this offensive line, and yeah. he's not doing anything yeah, this on off- the ball either. This offensive Delvin line is not doing you any favors. I looked up he's the stat. Uh, he only promise. averages 1.1 yards 
ru- a rush before contact. That is brutal. But and that one touchdown on the year, that was a receiving touchdown. So he, he could see another receiving touchdown. You never know. Uh, Cordell Patterson, only if Montgomery isn't playing, uh, maybe throw Still him. Still fight him. Nah. I mean, yeah, some people are looking – yeah, still avoid him, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, you're you can only, put you're him only in your flex maybe deeply. liking him if Montgomery's him out, RB2 otherwise you're avoiding him. Uh, same with Ryan Null, only if Montgomery's out. Ryan fucking Null, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Alan Robinson, obvious start. Vikings give up the fifth most well, points to wide receivers, uh, 31.3 <laughs> points per game. And he is the target hog in this offense. But someone who's seen a career high uh, in targets last week, Darnell Mooney, 11 targets against mm-hmm. the Titans, uh, 24 targets in the last three games. He seems to be getting more involved in this offense. How do you guys like him? I wish we had a better quarterback. Another guy who's a great route runner. I know we talked about Judy earlier. What? Yeah, better quarterback play. He might already be. Uh, They're all hindered by this offense, man. Uh, it's good fantasy relevant. Just player, sucks. But, uh, yeah, you're just hoping and praying he catches a deep pass. <laughs> yeah. If not, zero a week from him, maybe zero mm-hmm. to five. But <laughs> the guy who leads this team in red zone targets with eleven, Jimmy Graham. Do I need to repeat that? Is that is that something that should be? I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's very touchdown dependent streamer only reasons. because of his red zone yeah. targets. He is second on the team in total targets with fifty five. But again, this offense is horrific right now. So bad. Yep. The, then the less time and, uh, Cole commit gets, further further gets into the season, the older and older. <laughs> but Jimmy that works. should wrap up uh, all the games. Then uh, you want to take us out, Till? Yep. Oh, sure. Um, appreciate everyone listening, guys. Uh, please like, subscribe to the podcast, and uh, subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at dclemens2222. You can find my fantasy articles, the tight end streaming article, and the start sit. You can find me on Twitter at ike2121. I do the injury impact article. It comes out on Monday. It's pretty good. And uh, you can find me at be like underscore Mike with two eyes. I write the uh, weekly trends article. Uh, it is getting kind of tough <laughs> coming down the stretch. <laughs> but uh, there are still a lot of new things happening on offenses. So go check that out if you're interested. <laughs> Peace. Adios. Awesome, guys. As always, thanks for listening. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other.